Thank you, Mr. President. Um, we have had a lengthy debate about this question today. Um, uh, lots of opinions being thrown out there, but I want to come back to the fundamental question because it is a serious issue, a serious constitutional issue that has to do with the separation of powers. We have the executive branch and we have the legislative branch and the tensions are always there. We know that. Um, there is a very real question about when and how we will, uh, the executive uh, peacetime emergency powers will end. How? We can sit here and we can pass a resolution and say we're going to end it. But what are the ramifications of that going to be? We've heard a lot of that today. I'm just going to recap a few of the key ones that I think are really important for Minnesotans and everybody in this debate to understand that if the peacetime emergency powers lapse, we would be jeopardizing over $50 million a month in federal funding, have to immediately roll back important modifications and flexibilities that allow critical services such as nursing homes, mental health services, disability services, and child care centers to operate in this world of COVID. In education, the pandemic has taken a deep toll on our school's budgets, and we've provided flexibilities for fund transfers that allows districts and schools to remain whole, or as whole as possible. Uh, food security for Minnesota's children is essential, and we've directed schools to provide meals for the most vulnerable at this time because it was necessary. We have ensured care for children of critical workers, from health care providers to first responders to grocery workers, so that it's not a barrier for those workers to continue the important work that we need done on the front lines. School employees provided this care every day while prioritizing safe and healthy environments. COVID leave was provided, leave for state employees who contract COVID-19 or are caring for family members who contract COVID-19. And we've talked about the evictions. Evictions and garnishment moratoria would end with the end of the peacetime emergency. In addition, there is an executive order that allows the Department of Veterans Affairs to prevent veterans, uh, excuse me, to prevent visitors to veterans' nursing homes per CDC guidance. And if the peacetime emergency goes away, they would not be able to do that. And we've talked about how vulnerable our seniors are. We need to protect our, our senior veterans. In terms of licensing boards, we've changed, reduced, and postponed various, various licensing requirements for health-related and first responder boards to help those professionals focus on their jobs. Emergency procurement power allows us to quickly procure PPE, other equipment, facilities, et cetera, without following cumbersome uh, state procurement rules. Without the peacetime emergency, we can't do procurement and contracting quickly. This is a critical component to our response efforts, and without this ability, we're back to the normal bid process. The declaration also allows the more effective operation of the State Emergency Operations Center, and the declaration makes a stronger case to FEMA for reimbursement and makes a cleaner process in how we work with them and avoids confusion, all of which benefits the state and the people of Minnesota. So we can have a serious conversation about how to address this. What this sounds like to me is that we've got a, we're at 30,000 feet in a big plane and we've got the pilot in the cockpit flying the plane. And we want to kick him out, but we're not exactly sure who's going to take over the controls. We're not exactly sure how we're going to fly the plane after we kick him out. Mr. President and members, this pile of papers that I have in my hand are the bills that we are going to supposedly be considering today. This is legislation. Where is the legislation if we really are serious about ending the peacetime authority for the governor? Where's the legislation to take care of that? It looks like we've had time to do some things. Why hasn't the time been invested to say we are ready to step up and take care of these important parts of our state during this critical time of a pandemic and an economic recession and now a major historic civil rights and justice and equities moment? Happy to have that conversation anytime. Happy to participate in that conversation anytime. I know our members are as well. This is a serious conversation about separation of powers, but right now, this is asking to cast a vote without any regards for what the consequences would be. I think it was Senator Friends who pointed out that right now, 49 of 50 states currently have similar powers in place. And the 50th one, our neighbor to the east, I live real close to them, 
It was done by court order, and they are scrambling as a result because the rug was pulled out of them in this fashion. We need to not do that. We need to work together and keep being responsible and making sure that Minnesotans stay healthy and safe and that we are continuing to uh, address the economic challenges to Minnesotans' lives and livelihoods. This is important. It matters. But we are not ready for this. And so, members, I encourage everyone to vote against this resolution. Thank you.